Absolutely, Barbara. And again, you know, how I wouldn't uh, like this scenario to be at Mohonk having an adult beverage at one of the nicest <laughs> in-person meetings, um, as we all, you know, kind of strive for that as we get back to normal. Uh, but uh, I'm just, you know, grateful to be here with you guys today to, to share some of uh, what our team has learned in communications and engagement strategies from our schools across the globe. Uh, so Final Sight, our team has, has done a, a good job of trying to just stay connected with our schools. We serve uh, about 2,000 schools in 80 countries, and uh, we've seen some of this hit in Singapore and in China and in Brussels and in, you know, now on the East Coast. And, and we're really trying to stay connected, uh, stay sharing, and, and you know, keep engagement uh, priorities um, in, in, in the front view mirror amid, you know, everything that's going on. Uh, so obviously first, um, you know, safety and health is uh, priority number one, um, but how do we still stay connected in this social distancing uh, environment? I'm going through this right now. My daughter's a, a high school senior and we're, we're you know, acceptance day is, is right down the road. So how do we, how do you make a choice for uh, an investment in, in school and or re-enrollment or you know galas and just overall communications with your community and I, I'm, I'm hopeful that I can give you one or two takeaways from today's uh, session uh, but like I said our marketing team has done a wonderful job if you you know type in finalsite.com forward slash covid-19 they have a number of best practices and blogs from uh, guest speakers like David Willows, who's the Director of Advancement and Admissions at the International School of Brussels. He's been highlighted uh, by our um, folks, by EMA, by a number of, you know, thought leading organizations around. And then there's just some great examples of landing pages and COVID resources by each of our schools, uh, you know, pivoting to virtual admissions or virtual advancement. Um, experiences because they can't hold them on campus, can't hold their revisit days. So there's some great resources in that hub if you'd like. Um, and feel free to connect up with me on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm trying to share some of those every single day. Just again, um, in these distance, uh, uh, social distancing times where we can't go into school, can't go in the office. I'm seeing my adoption of Twitter kind of, you know, bump back up. I think early on, um, you know, Twitter was a place where I was sharing a lot in, you know, 2010, 2011, all the way to maybe 2015. And then it got noisy. Um, but now you see with this social distancing that uh, these social networks are getting, you know, more play and being more involved in, in being with the right people uh, at this time to, to learn, to teach, to connect, to collaborate uh, is, is really important. Uh, LinkedIn as well, I'm, I'm on there and via email, feel free to uh, shoot me an email if you have anything that is specific to your school uh, in these times, I'm happy to help. Um, as, as Barbara said, she knew me as a kid, I think before I had any kids. So now we've got you know 18 through eight and senior, junior, eighth grader and a, a second grader. Uh, I'm a proud UConn grad. I'm a recovering board member at two uh, private schools. Um, and, you know, education's in my blood. So my dad was a professor and two sisters are teachers. And I think what I'm gaining as the consumer in this time, but also as a partner and a leader, is we're in uncertain times. Um, so, you know, leading through these times is, is uh, very important. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We just don't know what time frame that end of the tunnel is. So any conversation that you're having with a family, with a faculty member, with uh, anyone who you can help, I think leading with empathy through that is going to win the day. And, and um, that's what I've been seeing most is, is the kindness that's shining out through the independent school community and the connections that are made. And, and that just a helpful spirit uh, to help get us through this. Um, we've not been in um, you know, a situ situation like this in my lifetime. I'm almost 50 now, I hate to uh, admit that, but you know, how 
how are we as humans getting back to, you know, the times when we grew up where being human and, and helping your neighbor is, is, um, was, was a norm. Now we can do that in the digital world. And I think now more than ever being human in this socially distanced kind of uh, time frame that we're in right now is a huge differentiator. And I think it's, it's a huge value add to it in your uh, admissions, in your advancement. Uh, but most importantly, in these time frames, it's, it's about your connections and your engagement with your constituents that, that is really going to be important. Uh, some of our young alums may have been displaced by recent layoffs by companies. How can we help them? Uh, some of our families might be struggling with re-enrollment fees and tuition. How can we listen and be empathetic through that? And we can't be a charity organization, but how can we help through this? Um, and how can we pave the way for, for a better tomorrow? So I, I think, you know, leading with empathy is, is my takeaway. And, um, you know, using empathy as, as an app, because your school is really the operating system. Uh, and, and that school mission spirit essence um, is, is a differentiator in today's day and age because most of the schools that we've talked to, and I'm sure a lot of the nicest schools have been forced to digitally transform in the last five weeks. Some have done it without a skip. And most nicest schools have had that vision to say, we need to dip our toe into blended learning or distance learning or uh, other revenue streams with summer camps and auxiliary programs. Um, so you guys are, are probably better off to get through this um, uh, situation because you were able to innovate and able to pivot in a very timely manner. Um, and, and think about that. Um, the content in this deck has been uh, done by the final site team. So the majority of this is Kristen and Mia who are really connected in, if you haven't read the final site blog, uh, I'm big fans of storytelling and authentic content. You should look at it. It's finalsite.com forward slash blog, but you should also try to emulate it for your schools uh, because now in this time, people might not be buying, might, might not be giving, but they have more time than ever to read engaging, authentic content from your schools. Um, an example that I'd love to tell is Avon Old Farms. Uh, so Avon Old Farms forward slash blog is a wonderful example of content preparation and engagement for uh, education purposes. So they're pumping out content from coaches, from admissions, from teachers, from different personalities on uh, their site, and it's helping them in Google search engine rankings, and it's helping them in repurposing content on their website, uh, but it really is, is building a content library for when you need it. So that blog has been going and thriving for about a year and a half now, and now they have more eyes and readership on it uh, more than ever. So Looking at this from a content and an engagement standpoint, these are opportunistic times to look for those authentic stories, to celebrate those folks that are uh, changing the lives of your kids in and outside the walls every single day. And using this time frame to change the mindset of maybe some of your teachers or coaches in that they are part of the marketing team. They are part of the mission. They are part of the, the spirit and the essence and the value proposition that you're bringing to the table. So thinking about that in terms of connections and engagements. Um, lastly, we've got a full day uh, of free marketing and it's a bunch of our marketing strategists from around the globe uh, that are, are just schools doing wonderful things uh, if you're looking to get inspired and uh, um, look about, you know, how do you actually pivot to a virtual revisit day or a virtual admissions? These are more deep dives into different areas for admissions and uh, development and athletics in different areas. Um, all free to everyone. So uh, again, I, our team is connected very well uh, to bring a, an all-star panel of uh, folks to present during that day. So today's agenda, we'll kind of go through um, 
you know, in different parts and we'll break here through each part for um, some Q&A. And Barbara, I don't know if you want to read off the questions or we unmute people. Um, you know, I'm happy to kind of make it as interactive as possible. I know my my own kids were going on about four weeks now at home and they're not listening to me anymore. So I don't expect you guys to, to, to listen to an hour straight of me, uh, but uh, we can break it up by the parts here. Um, but part one is messaging. And, and again, you know, the role to inform and engage. And I think th those are two distinctive, uh, you know, uh, separations and differentiators. Uh, there are definitely uh, pieces of, of content that are out there just to inform and then there's other that really are there to inspire and engage so let's break that down a little bit um, so let's talk about um, you know the the distribution strategies and let's talk about which platforms are there to engage which platforms are there to inform and which have a sweet spot in the middle and I think a lot are target audiences too. So if you look at Instagram, um, probably your students, maybe some of your parents. Um, if you look at TikTok, definitely your students. Um, you look at the virtual experiences and the authentic stories, that's going to be a mix of both. And it's probably going to help, uh, you know, your revisit days that transition into uh, your, your virtual revisit days and uh, your uh, applicant pool or your yield into the admissions class of 2024. Um, your uh, platforms that engage and inform, you know, websites. I've seen so many wonderful page pops that are basically just week one of this COVID uh, crisis. Whenever it hit you, uh, it was, hey, you know, we're taking these precautions. It's hitting us, or school is closed, but learning continues. Um, so using those as informational and we've seen pivots from after kind of week one of the information stage being over then those page pops turn to more uh, action driven is the page pop on the home page was less informational and the page pop on the parent portal or the information on the parent portal or the parent pages were more communications home page went after week one to virtual revisit days, or if you had a gala that you had to cancel um, or a, a, an advancement event that had to cancel, you pivoted those to more of the marketing type uh, messages on, uh, on your homepage. Email marketing, again, uh, very, uh, very effective in, in uh, the last month and a half or so. Um, and these can, again, be just quick hits of information and they can be inspiring kind of, these are the things that we're doing to keep our community connected. Uh, a lot of the groups um, in Facebook, uh, Facebook groups, Facebook page, highlights, um, maybe those are going through uh, the Facebook stories or the Instagram stories. Uh, but again, those are platforms that are engaging and informing all in, in based on the content. Um, the other side is again getting down to the device of choice. So informational apps, um, you know, logging into community portals and Twitter again more is kind of the quick bite size information and in, in chunks of uh, getting your content out. Again, a lot of this makes a lot of sense if you're looking at your content strategies as create once and publish everywhere. Um, so you could take video, you could do imagery, you can do text, you can combine all three. And uh, each of them might have its own kind of content strategy to get the best engagement out there. Uh, so speaking of this, uh, as we transition over to content strategies is what are things that get people engaged? Um, you know, questions, polls, uh, challenges, user generated content positivity shines through. So anything that can bring happy thoughts, it could be a throwback Thursday post of a, a coach from the eighties and name all the players that played for this coach or question, what was your favorite coach or what was your favorite food or school lunch or different things that aren't really kind of thought heavy, but just get people to smile about the positivity of the wonderful experiences that they uh, had on campus. Uh, so thinking about that as you're, you're throwing out those polls to cast the wide net and you want to get cross-generational interaction in here, 
to get the most engagement and comments and likes and, and, and shares. Um, live Q and A's, some people are doing Zoom, some people uh, are doing uh, go to webinars, some people are doing FaceTime, Facebook Lives, you know, different things like that. Uh, utilizing where your audience is and trying things. You might get, you know, zero people to your first live Q and A, but you know, in a week and a half, you might get 150 people. So, you know, testing things out that might fail. Um, and I think now is the time more than ever to try new things and experiment because your audience is going to be like, they're at least trying. Uh, and, and analysis by paralysis of should I do this? This live Q and A needs to be perfect. You know, we can kind of bend the rules a little bit here to see what we can do to engage with our audience out there. News and newsletters and stories and blogs, all of these, again, are engaging and informing at the same time to help solidify your mission, your brand during this crisis timeframe, that you're there for them, that you're trying to help wherever they are in the journey of their school from you know, admissions to re-enrollment to current families to graduation to uh, you know, the alumni environment. Um, informing. Um, again, any of these pref press releases or if someone is, you know, infected in your community, uh, those are real time. They need to be transparent. They need to be sent from your head um, and leadership. Um, any cancellations of prom or, and again, I'm going through this with my daughter. It's sad stuff, but safety first and it's driven down by leadership. So the informational priority news gets through the noise. Um, so thinking about doing that so that everyone actually can get their eyes on it. Content pieces, again, a lot of our schools, um, you know, the first week was how do we get to distance learning? That is the goal. We're going to raise our focus on that. Um, we're kind of through that. And it's an iterative process. Everybody's got to get better in the blended learning, distance learning environment. I think we're only going to come out of this in the 2020, uh, 2021 year with that blended learning, blended experience model. I think a lot of our folks are, are learning on the fly, but uh, they're changing. That's the way we've always done that and saying, all right, well, this worked, this didn't. How can we integrate this into the digital campus for 2020? Um, you know, other engaging stuff, anything that students are doing in um, their own art um, rooms at home or student work, you know, this is reaching out to your faculty and saying, guys, I need your help. Um, share awesome stories, share awesome content. If your, guy, if your kids are doing great projects at home and they're videoing it and they're sharing it, you know, get that content out there and it's gonna really get to people's hearts and, and keep them uh, connected. Um, Students and faculty, I think this is a great time to celebrate them. Uh, a lot of our schools are doing student profiles of their seniors, either on Instagram or Facebook or, or different areas to give them uh, that celebration. They're, they're missing kind of that last year of uh, what's supposed to be one of the best years of their high school career. So how do we you know, make them feel connected and celebrated? Um, and again, these inspirational quotes could be, from Simon Sinek, The Infinite Game. It could be from uh, you know, a, a number of uh, thought leaders out there, but if you have some on campus that is, again, a guru of a coach or uh, a, a leader or an English uh, uh, teacher that really get your community inspired, uh, try to go from within, but then you can also use kind of the, the, uh, the other thought leaders out there. Um, other content, again, you know, we're getting bombarded, I think, now. Uh, weekly recaps in case you missed it or the look ahead. Um, and then most of our schools right now are in the weeds of how do we get virtual and how do we make it virtual as effective as in-person uh, connections and communications? Because we all know the word of mouth in the campus tours and the experience is really what kind of is that tipping point point for someone to enroll in our schools. How are we doing this now in a, uh, a disconnected or a virtual world? I think 
we, the ones that do this well are going to be the ones that, that really come out with their admissions class of 2024 uh, in, in a very positive light or as, as positive as we can in these uncertain times. Um, and then the information again, you know, school closures, um, how do you log into the learning portal, you know, graduation prom is canceled. Hopefully it's not canceled. Maybe it's postponed to, you know, a homecoming dance next year as everybody comes home for Thanksgiving or just different ways to inform, but also keep them inspired. Um, all of this kind of comes with we're in a noisy environment anyway, so how do we break through the noise? And I think that's where you juggle engaging versus informational versus both to uh, connect and truly make a connection with your audience. Um, and I think that differs between the personas, right? So your alums, they've already gone through the process. They know your value add. They know you care about them. They trust your brand. Uh, they're going to, you know, stay connected. Uh, the uh, admissions pipeline, you might have to earn their trust a little bit better with uh, more real world experiences or peer to peer content that breaks through their own noise. But this is a, a simple uh, Facebook and Instagram kind of calendar. If you guys don't have something like this for your school, it's pretty nice to put this in place for your own sanity purposes, but also so you work on frequency and cadence um, and, and, you know, really strive for awesome content in here. Um, so this goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, both one or the other. Um, you know, and again, I, I would say that some of the posts you want to really focus on frequency, uh, posts are going to be evergreen. Um, and the stories are going to be more quick hits where they're going to disappear after 24 hours. So you can get a little more volume on your stories, but the posts that go on these social sites, you don't want to saturate someone's feed with, with your school postings. Uh, so think about it. A lot are in this environment with uh, a lot of the content suggestions from the previous slides. So we won't go into it too much, but as you download the slides after this, really look at this and, and tweak it towards what you're able to pump out for content. Um, and you don't want to just become part of the noise. You want to, you want to be really awesome and personal to these target personas that you're trying to get to on Instagram, which again, traditionally are your students. Maybe, maybe your parents are following you on Instagram. I don't, I don't know. Um, but your Facebook uh, groups are maybe your parents and, Maybe you're, you're graduating seniors now. My daughter just got on Facebook last week, but she only did so because she had to be part of the accepted students group of the college that she's going to. So thinking about it from a channel uh, environment, but also the persona that you're trying to reach here too. Email, you don't want to bog down the email box either. So uh, this could be a, a cadence of, hey, the week ahead, um, this is what we need to do for distance learning and stay plugged in. Uh, engagement emails, you know, something on social, driving them to the social or a mashup on your, uh, your website platform. Uh, contest with uh, hashtags for your school and just helpful content for, uh, again, like uh, career services for your alumni base or uh, different content that's going to be helpful during these tough times for the families and your alumni base and your constituents uh, as we kind of, you know, go through it. Friday, a, a recap and get them motivated for next week. Um, and, and really, again, just trying to get a cadence here where people aren't just saying your content is spam. Um, so let's, let's take a little pause here. And Barbara, if you have one or two questions that you want to tee up, um, we can do so. And if yeah. not, um, I think that the, the, the only real question was, are the slides going to be made available? And I said, yes. And I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So the, these are all helpful again, in our eyes, what we hope is that you copy and steal and make it your own. I mean, you know, there's no magic bullet for, Hey, this slide deck is going to work for all the 40 schools on the, on the panel, but I think if you can take it and look at your own process, look at your own content, look at your own schedules and make those better, 
then this session is a success. Great. And um, I think that if, if other people have a question, um, uh, we're a small enough group, I think that you, if you have one, just unmute your microphone and ask. And there might be time for one, one or two questions at this point. All right, I've just got some public or private chats that people love the Avon Old Farms blog. So again, uh, avonoldfarms.com forward slash blog is a great work in, in example that, that I would check out. Um, so um, can we talk about things that don't work, things to avoid? Um, that is a wonderful question. So I think, you know, if, if everything comes from a place of being helpful, I think that's going to work, is staying connected. Community matters more now than ever. Um, I was talking to a, a friend who was a head of school uh, in Maryland the other day, and he's like, I'm struggling. You know, I, I didn't sign up for this distance stuff, you know. I signed up for the full contact, right? I need to see my faculty. I need to pump them up. I need to see the kids. So knowing that that's kind of the mindset is, is everybody struggling during this? Not only, you know, your consumers, but your, your leaders and, and your staff and, and whatnot. Um, I think that's, that's really key. What doesn't work is being tone deaf. Is, hey, we're $300,000 short on our annual fund budget. We got to hit them and we got to hit them hard. And we, we need that. We need that to hit our own goals. So just, just and I don't think anyone's doing that. But I think that's basically is, is we're in a, in a time where helping is the new recruitment, um, being valuable to your alums and being connected is going to go a lot further five years from now, 10 years from now in keeping them close to the school. Uh, I think people are going to look at your school and how you interact and um, connect with them during these times. Uh, an example is Georgetown Prep. Uh, Pat Coyle, Director of Marketing Communications, a good friend of mine, he said, hey, we, we just sent out an intentional email to all of our donors saying, we're not going to ask you for money until the summer. And this is the oldest Jesuit boys school in the, in the country. They're used to the golf outing. They're used to getting the robo dials and phonathons for the annual fund. They're used to really getting capital campaign asks and they they were a quarter of the way through their capital campaign they said we're just putting it on hold uh so i think that will probably yield gifts in itself by just saying we know this is a trying time for you and we're going to stop business as usual and we're going to help our community get through this we're going to stay connected and prep is going to be prep uh so i think that will not to to be too long-winded being tone deaf in these times to align with um, admissions goals, advancement goals. Um, I think that is one thing that's not going to work in the short term, and it's going to have a residual effect on the longer term of your brand. Great question, though. So let's get into, uh, you know, part two is keeping spirits high and connected. So I think a lot of this basically just kind of reinforce what I said is being, being emotionally intelligent in this situation um, is going to gain you a lot of trust and not only just gain you a lot of friends is just being human in this circumstance is, is critical, but also, you know, it, it's a nice pause from, you know, the busy, noisy life that everybody has had for the past 20 years. So how can you look at opportunities from this and how can you empathize with people as they're going through this? I had stated, you know, someone losing their job of, of a young alumna. You know, I, I, there was a company out of Boston that just laid off like 1,500 people and they were an up and coming software company. And I'm like, those are a lot of our school's young alums. You know, how are we being a resource for them? Or just looking at the seniors and yeah, they're just bummed out. So how do we keep them happy? How do we, how do we celebrate them? Maybe not in a physical moment right now, but online now and in a physical moment later. And how do we build new traditions out of that? And I think, you know, uh, being uh, emotionally intelligent on all of your different um, personas is key. And just 
Blair Academy, this is a light little kind of, you know, mashup social video of just keeping people, you know, excited. Uh, but students have their own stressors, parents and faculty have their own stressors, money's probably a stress with some companies furloughing people or losing jobs or just what's, you know, how long is this going to be? Is it going to be two more weeks? Is it going to be, you know, six months? Is, I know we're going to come out of this, but I think the, the equation is open-ended right now for uh, a number of us to be really steadfast and saying, yes, by August 1st, we're all going to be back to school and it's business as usual. So I think just being emotionally intelligent through this and understanding your different people in your community and how you can be helpful is, is key in the messaging, in the connections, but also in aligning with, I love, you know, as they reflect back on this, I love what our school did to help out everyone. Um, so different needs from different constituents. So faculty, it might be an email, it might be a Zoom happy hour, it might be celebrating somebody who pivoted awesome um, into digital learning and digital teaching and digital connections that you thought might not have ever done that. You know, they might not have taught digitally in their traditional classroom, but they really picked it up and they did awesome. Um, or parents, you know, and again, how are you posting different things uh, to the parent audience or uh, the students where I love them. The McCallie school did a little um, ice, ice, vanilla ice uh, challenge on um, their uh, TikTok and they shared it on Insta and social and, and Facebook. Uh, but just had everybody build this as a community and, and really connection is key in, in this environment. Uh, so thinking about that of which platform, which content is going to get people excited and, and stay community-based um, now more than ever. So where to reach your audiences? You know, and again, I think this is very important if people don't know which platforms are kind of their go-tos. Um, so students, again, Instagram. I think is the number one. TikTok is the up and, up and coming because parents aren't there yet and they don't know what the heck TikTok is. Um, so they're gonna kind of just talk to their friends that way. They're going to sites for looking for static content. They're getting their emails and they're going to mobile apps. Um, parents, email first, probably website second. Uh, a lot of schools are doing some good stuff with Facebook and Facebook groups. Twitter, maybe more for the dads. Uh, Instagram. Uh, I think the moms are on Instagram too. And um, I'm on Instagram, but I don't follow our kids school um, mobile app as well. Um, faculty, email, website, Facebook groups. And again, Zoom is, is a great collaboration tool to keep the faculty uh, together and maybe department uh, meetings via Zoom too. Um, and alumni, again, email. Our alumni offices usually have bad data for their email, so this is a great time to, to collect more data. Maybe go out to LinkedIn and look where your, uh, your alums are and update your Raises Edge database so that you can uh, reach out to them with valuable content when you need them. Uh, but again, alums are emails, website, Facebook, and Instagram uh, traditionally to, to stay connected. Uh, you don't need to be on all of these, but you just need to be aware of this is where traditionally those uh, target persona groups are. Um, creating the connected community, I think now more than ever, it's, it's really key uh, that we be intentional about the connections. Um, so if you're posting something awesome on Facebook, be there, be present. You know, it's not social media if you're not answering comments and engaging and, you know, it's just media out there. So being present in these uh, are, are really key. Uh, if you don't have a Facebook group, create one because now is the time people are looking for that uh, connection, collaboration in uh, their own space. Don't cancel events, make them virtual if you can. We've had a lot of great success stories of people pivoting. Uh, Elgin Academy and I just did a um, webinar on how they brought their extravaganza to a virtual extravaganza uh, in three days. So it might not be perfect, but being able to say we're the show is going on. Um, and what they saw is 
they canceled the in-person black tie affair, but um, they raised more money. And by doing it via email and virtually, they were able to get people around the Elgin community, which is right outside of Chicago, from California, Europe, different areas. So you might see opportunities in maybe not just written, not raising money. That's not really the, the, the onus or end game of this is getting more engagement and inviting more people to stay connected with you uh, with these virtual events. I think that's the opportunity out of this is getting a higher participation rate. Um, and that is going to, again, give you a long tail of connection with uh, your donor base or uh, your community in, in a virtual environment. Um, and keep the cadences. So keep it up with your calendar so you're not overflowing uh, the content. Um, again, this is a sign here of page pops. So a lot of our schools are using uh, the page pops for great information, um, using authentic voices, celebrating teachers. And if you have a great content library, it's okay to reuse that content and celebrate success stories and get people thinking and remembering about when those happened. And some people might be seeing that for the first time. So uh, if you have a strong content library, go to it. Um, we're at like 240, Barbara. Why don't we go through, we have best practices for engaging and best practices for informing. So why don't I get through these and then we'll open it up to Q&A. Make sense? She's shaking her head. All right, we'll do that. So let's look at some best practices. And again, I think all of our schools are in it for the long haul, but we want to get through this short time frame window and use this as an opportunity to stay connected and engaged. So short term, enrolling new families, re-enrollment goals, those are, you know, sustainability and revenue. I wrote an article for NBOA this past week and I think those are top of mind on a lot of heads of schools, a lot of boards and a lot of business officers right now is, is meeting those enrollment goals because a lot of our schools are tuition based uh, driven schools. Uh, short term, keeping community spirits up, keeping the community connected or a sense of community when you're not there in person. Um, one of my good friends, Dennis Chapman is the head of school at the Village School of Naples. Um, he's done now a, a webinar series leading from the lanai. Um, and again, uh, in Connecticut, where yesterday it was about 60 mile an hour winds and, and rainstorms, you guys probably get the same weather. He's down in sunny Naples uh, holding his staff meetings on his back porch. Um, but leading from the lanai is a really nice way of, of connecting with this community. And they tie in with uh, their faculty, they tie in with their families. And it's really like a webinar Zoom kind of format like this where there's dialogue and connections happening. Um, short term reassuring families, we are gonna open in the fall and it is going to be better because we've learned more of the blended value add programs and experiences. Um, and then long term again is, is maybe now is a time to look at, you know, um, your reviews on Google or Rate My Teacher or Niche or the different areas and ask your audience, hey, can you recommend us? Um, you know, year over year health of re-enrollment, search engine optimization, um, longer organic reach. Um, maybe in longer term is gonna be mergers and acquisitions of uh, other campuses and schools. Uh, you, don't, you don't know at the school-wide level, but I think the engagement level is building up your, um, your credibility online, I think, as, as you're looking for re-enrollment. So email for engagement. Let's look at this platform. And again, a lot of people said when Facebook and, and Twitter and, and LinkedIn came out that email's dead. Uh, I think email is still probably the go-to for engagement, uh, depending on audience once a week. So, um, you know, it should come from your director of marketing communications uh, whoever owns that messaging, it should be helpful, should be personal, should be humorous if you can be. Um, and it should, again, really elegantly organize that information uh, coming from your school, whether it's video or news uh, or virtual events, invites, 
a recap of your blogs. It could be like we final site we do it in case you missed it and you have the three top trending blogs. So thinking about this and shrinking your email uh, for the best engagement. And, and again, the goal is to break through the noise and get someone to not only open your email, read it, click through, get to the call to actions and, and convert into a way uh, that might be helpful to, to you. Uh, here's some examples from uh, Calhoun, um, Trinity Pauling. Uh, there are different ways to send emails out. Um, the Trinity Pauling one is pulling from our um, news posts. The Calhoun one is just a straightforward informational email. Uh, Perky Omen is again, uh, timely from the head of school. This is virtual perk and here's the weekly activity. So really thinking about this in different ways to connect with your audience. Email best practices uh, for video. Uh, again, if you're gonna shoot them out through email, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, quick hits. Uh, there's tools out there like Vidyard and Drift, Soapbox uh, we use on our marketing team um, or your own video platform that basically will plug these little snippets of video right into your, um, right into your email. Um, where do they direct to? So that clickable link could be to your website, could be to YouTube. It's not just to a video, it could be a landing page uh, that has a call to action or more cross-marketing uh, content or informational content. Uh, but we're seeing more and more video in this day and age kind of get through. Social media, again, one to two times on Facebook, one to two times on Instagram. Uh, Twitter is a little more, uh, you can hit it with some more frequency. If you want to go more than that on Facebook and Instagram, uh, revert to or defer to the stories because that's really a daily and then it's going to wipe it out after the day. Uh, but great content. Uh, we recommend posting from the school account. Again, positive, helpful, encouraging. Uh, could be the student faculty spotlights, could be throwbacks, uh, could be a, a, a student takeover, could be you know uh, many different ways, but that drives en engagement when people take it over. Uh, so uh, just a, a note, food for thought is frequency. If you're posting it too often, that's why we recommend the one to two on Facebook and one to two on Insta. It's gonna throw off the algorithms and it's gonna hurt your overall engagement. Uh, so thinking of that cadence and that posting time frame, um, and and really leaning into the best practice on this. Um, if you want to share more and you have a ton more to share, turn to the stories. Um, Carolwood Day School down in Florida. This is a a, a great post here. Um, and again, it's just like you know, positive, aspirational. We got this. This is who we are, and we're going to come out stronger. Um, you know, in this case, uh, everybody loves to see like the snapshot of the, the Zoom teaching or uh, how their, their teachers are adapting at school. Keeping it real, it doesn't need to be perfect. The authentic content uh, breaks through. Social video, so not email video best practices, social. Um, and this is, again, you might create one great video and then trim it down for the different platforms, I would recommend that if, if you've got some uh, good editing skills. Insta is about 30 seconds, Facebook about a minute, uh, Twitter 45 seconds, and LinkedIn 30 to 90 seconds. Um, you can also go live on Facebook and Insta um, if you don't have uh, a Zoom or a GoToWebinar account. That could be for the Q&A sessions, or if you have a, a, a featured alum that wants to come back and get everybody excited, or an author series, or different things that are, again, adding value and connections uh, to your community. I don't think we need to focus too much on the rigorous learning right now. It's more about connected and community-based than ever before. Um, so uplifting, encouraging, um, and it could be, again, alumni spotlights, faculty spotlights, any creative projects, tips and tricks, um, you name it. Gwyneth Mercy Academy, this is one of my favorites. It's all of their kids just saying thank you as they dress up as uh, their superheroes for 2020, which is the majority of our frontline first responders. 
um, you know, learning with your pets at home or, um, you know, St. John's Prep actually had this as uh, a recording of one of the kids actually, you know, logging into their class space for the first time. So real live, getting better adoption in the distance learning, just getting, you know, fun loving examples out to your community. And then a lot of folks say, well, how do I ask people for content? Um, it, it's pretty easy. Just ask them. Um, and, and this could be a mindset going into next year too, is you're not marketing and you're not recruiting all by yourselves, whether you have an admissions or marketing title, it, it takes a village. Um, you know, everybody's in sales, everybody's in marketing and you're selling a luxury value add item is we need more access to those real authentic stories because they sell more than anyone uh, could possibly uh, pitch something is those authentic experiences. Uh, so students, teachers, faculty, staff, young alums, how do you ask them? You can challenge them for share the best, you know, Instagram post of uh, um, the winter sports highlights or uh, the way that your senior is dealing with the disconnect or different school-wide initiatives. Um, you know, we can post them, we can ask them to retweet, we can share, like, comment, uh, build different collages and collections out of them. Um, but what we're trying to do is get the community together in not only the content curation and, and creation, uh, but also then the, the, um, the comments in, in the sharing and in, in the celebration of uh, that, the culmination of that. And, you know, that was engaging. We want, us, we want the connection to come out uh, of the engagement. And that's the goal of the engagement is you're not going to be able to recruit. You're not going to be able to retain. You're not going to be able to cultivate. Um, and you're definitely not going to be able to educate without engagement. So keeping that connection and community first in a digital uh, environment that we've been forced into uh, is, is really top priority for a lot of our schools. And then the second part is the information. Um, and again, real time transparent trust in information is really key um, and, and people are watching. Uh, so short term, getting everybody on the same page and getting them informed, um, getting them to know where our plan is and our timeframes and getting them confidence in not only the school, but also the leadership. Um, and those are hand in hand. Long term, people look at how you deal in a crisis um, and they remember. So building trust in down times as well as good times is, is an opportunity. And I think that's, this is a trust opportunity environment is doing the right thing, uh, getting your community through this tough time where we're going to come out on the other side. Uh, it's a really great investment for the long term. Um, and I do think how people have dealt with being forced to the digital experience and digital transformation is really going to hit short-term unenrollment, but also long-term unenrollment because your word of mouth is, is uh, the value add. Now what we're seeing is that word of mouth is scaled um, and it's scaled on Facebook, it's scaled on Twitter, it's scaled on um, you know, their, the Zoom calls and people really are, are coming into um, seeing how we're adjusting to this new norm. Your website. So how can that be that central hub of communication? You know, I showed you some examples of page pops, uh, of parent portal updates, news articles. A lot of schools are coming up with landing pages of COVID information. So how do we get to, it's a COVID hub, all right? These are the information. So anything that you push out on social or email or a blog, now that COVID hub is really the elegant, organized, uh, one-stop shop. Um, and it's really coming out nicely as most of this is moving on the fly. Um, long term, uh, I, we've seen our schools use the website with virtual campus tours and changing to virtual events and really upping their game on blogging content in uh, realizing how are we going to live in this hybrid blended learning uh, environment and changing strategy, but also delivery, um, integrating social media. So it's not just on social now, it's also pulling back in real time on our homepage or on our COVID hub page, 
um, reusing that kind of technology to make us work a little more efficiently. Um, and then some are adding this because adding an app is the same content as your, your website, but now you can actually get those little, um, you know, uh, let me see if I can show that, you know, I have two messages here, but on your app, you get the red two in your app and it shows, Oh, I've got a message from, uh, the Calhoun school. So if you're using an app, it could hit that target audience too of news and updates in a real time fashion. So I think we're trying to build, uh, you know, the web as the central hub of communications in trusted real time times. So, uh, I can stay connected and it's really now more than ever bridging the school to home communication aspect. Let's talk about email announcements and, and news. Um, you know, again, information driven timing is they could be ASAP. You know, one of our, uh, our school head is in, infected with COVID and this is what we're doing or an alum just passed or, uh, you know, it could be uh, schools back in session. You know, it could be good, bad news, but it's ASAP information. Um, other than that, we should have a regular and predictable cadence. Um, these announcements should come from your head of school or someone who is a known leadership person from the school. They should be transparent. They should be sincere, honest, to the point. And again, I lean back on emotional intelligence. It's got to be key in here. We cannot fumble with a tone deaf offering. Um, so uh, wordy emails are okay if they're descriptive. Uh, they should be under your branded newsletter information uh, and they should be segmented by audience of appropriate type, possibly popping in a fireside chat video or content that could get more human um, in sharing the same written word. But again, you can see facial expressions and, and build off sincerity of that delivery. Um, so thinking about that. These are two different examples. One is Lakeside in Washington. Um, so, you know, this is, you know, just straight text and wording on uh, the pandemic. And uh, Avon All Farms is a little more branded and uh, it's got words, it's got videos, it's got text. Um, and then it links to the real or the full newsletter. So thinking about this in different ways of delivery um, and what's gonna be best for your audience. Um, and email video best practices, again, you know, optimal length is as long as you need, but probably no more than five minutes, um, you know, where we're going to direct them to a website or a social post. This is an example of me as coming from final site. Hi there. Uh, you know, we've got this information, watch the video below uh, in a signature, but that could be a way to break through uh, in your admissions um, emails. Um, or your advancement emails and connecting with young alums on a career mentoring offering that you're coming up with or uh, your admissions funnel on revisit days and, and putting that face of the admissions counselor to the name uh, and, and, you know, connecting them with mom, dad, and, and student. Uh, so thinking about that in, in a way. Social, again, you know, direct to the point, no fluff for informational content, important announcements. Um, once a day, because again, we want to make sure the algorithms don't get uh, keyed off by us. Um, and if it's um, more than that, we want to defer your other engaging content to the stories. You might want to get the informational content to take priority uh, over these. Twitter's great for frequent updates and informational posts, but you're, you don't, I don't know where your audience is. So traditionally Facebook is, is where most parents are today. Insta is with your students and maybe some parents. And then Twitter is maybe for some of your uh, techie parents too. So knowing your audience and what platforms are is gonna help you uh, on the social posting on informational and engagement posts. Um, just, you know, really neat things. I think Pace Academy is doing a great job here of their final site feeds into a central page. Um, people are posting, uh, Landon did a great job with their distance learning and a lot, I think we're getting sick of now the Zoom posts of the Brady Bunch kind of block style, everybody's doing that, but thinking of what is gonna break through the noise, um, you know, with your community. And lastly, mobile app. 
very much, again, all of the content that you're putting on your website should be able to get out to uh, the mobile app in the experience. And that community portal, think and create and, and publish, uh, create once, publish everywhere. This could go to the Avon, um, many different authors. You're gonna post it on your admissions portal, on your homepage, on your parent portals, and you can then reutilize that in other calendars or newsletter kind of uh, features. Um, so just a neat little example of like a COVID hub and a parent portal is really a launching pad for single signing into a student information system or you know, a, a Naviance portal or different areas uh, of your website. But the more you can elegantly organize that for a parent, for a faculty, for a student, I think that's gonna get you the best adoption in here uh, and the best engagement. Um, some additional features, these are in the deck and also I'll send that COVID page where there's a number of live examples. Um, and just some of the tools that Final Search has been using, I mentioned page pops, email marketing, uh, blogs and posts and portals and feeds. A lot of this for those of you on the uh, in the audience that are Facebook uh, clients, thank you for your trust in our partnership. If you're not using these tools, contact your client success manager. Uh, you should think about them as you're trying for the best informational purposes and the best engagement. Um, but those are some of the tools that I kind of referenced. And we're always discussing this. So Final Sight has a school marketing community group on Facebook. So if you want to join that, again, it's, it's free of charge. I think there's 2,000 plus members in there. Um, and we're just trying to kind of keep that discussion going. Um, the school marketing day, um, as I stated, free full day of PD. And then uh, I know, Barbara, you have a, a hard stop at three usually for these, but maybe what we can do is open it up for, for one last question, um, if anybody has anything out here. These will be recorded. Uh, as I said, you know, connect up with me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or via email. I'm happy to kind of coach anybody through whether they're a final site client or not. Um, you know, these are tough times and uncertain times for a lot of us, but I think uh, hopefully some of these tips will help you align with how you're going to best uh, connect with the audience, or it might just give you a sanity check of what you've been doing over the last month and saying, oh, I have been kind of, you know, connecting and, and collaborating and uh, engaging uh, a lot like uh, some of the schools that are doing it in a best practice way. 